Hi people, how are you? I hope you're doing great. And yeah, today we're going to be talking about Thunder Heat, uh, the second book in the Arc of a Side trilogy by Nell Schusterman. And I have to say that I love it. I love uh, this book more the second time that I did read it than the first one. The first one I did rate this one like three stars over five and the second go around it's been like five over five because um, probably I was in a place in my mind and in my life in which I could appreciate everything like a lot more and I have to say there's lots of things that I love about this book. Um, we are going to pick up the story where we left off. Um, Citra is now the aside Anastasia and I love how she grows into her new role. But um, at the beginning, she's like, um, maybe I felt like she was playing two parts. She was a still Citra, but when she was donning the clothes of the side, she became a side Anastasia. But as the story progresses and she begins to take uh, decisions and to take actions and doing things certain ways, she truly became a side Anastasia. And for me, it has been an amazing character growth from the girl that we met in the first book, that she was very mad thinking that the aside that had come to her home was going to glean someone from her family, and how she stood her ground, and she was very inquisitive, and you know, and seeing the character that she's become in the second book, I mean, she's an amazing character. Also, Rowan, obviously, we're going to see more of him. He has become this side called Aside Lucifer, and uh, he hasn't been ordained. If you remember the first book, he managed to escape with his life and he has like one year immunity, but he cannot be on site and um, everyone is uh, looking for him, you know, to apprehend him and end with his life as it was pre-ordered in the first book. But um, he has taken it upon himself to glean all those sites who don't work in a good way who are gleaning because they have bias against gender, or race, or culture, or whatever. So he's, he's doing like a cleaning job of, you know, of all the asides who are like bad people. And I do love to see how far Rowan has also gone. And I love when we have chapters about him and you can see how he's processing things. And he has been trying, but a very good aside, aside Faraday, but he has, a, has also been trained and abused by aside Godard and all the things that he did in the first book to read the wall of the presence of aside Godard, how it waits on him. It's not something that he did and has no you know, no consideration into who he is now, but it has a lot of way into who he is now and how he reacts to the world around him. So I love that about them. And in this book, we are going to be, I don't want to say much about what we are going to be finding in this book, because uh, there is a lot of plot twists that you aren't expecting, and they are amazing. But let's say that we are going to be seeing more about how the aside world works, how there are different classes and the power structure and how it all works. And we are going to be seeing people who we weren't expecting to be seeing again, who are going to be wreaking havoc and being... Yeah. And yeah, um, the title of the book is Thunderhead. Um, yeah, I remember how in the first book there was like these little parts in which we had uh, these kind of fragment things that were parts of the diaries of different sites. Here, all these little things are going to be part of the Thunderhead who is going to be sharing its thoughts with us. Uh, remember, Thunderhead was this artificial intelligent king of being who kind of um, saved humanity and began to do equations and things. So there's lots of resources for everyone and there's equality and all of that. And in the first book, it looked like it was perfect and very balanced and that he was like this benign entity who took care of everything. And in this book, when we're going to be finding these little fragments at the beginning of each chapter, we are going to be delving into the mind of the Thunderhead. And it's kind of unsettling sometimes, because um, you can see how he thinks about humanity, about how he thinks about himself, about himself, itself, and how he... Yeah, it looked like he was a neutral being, but in this book it looks like he's kind of a master pupiter, and I'm not going to say much more. But it's unsettling sometimes when you're reading about him and the way in which he's processing he. I don't know why I identify it with a he, but it has no sex, it's an artificial intelligence, so it's an it. But yeah, I don't know, in my head it's like he's a 
pink. I don't know why. Well, anyway, um, yeah, it's uh, funny how you see how he eat. Sorry, uh, process his thoughts, and sometimes he begins to elevate himself over humanity. Like uh, at the beginning, you have this feeling that he's like a protective parent uh, trying to protect humanity. But as you keep on reading, you begin to see how he considers his, himself like a superior entity and you began to glimpse behind the curtain and you began to see that sometimes it is playing uh with humanity in a way it's stealing them humanity into success and a right way but yeah there are things that you're going to be discovering at least for me out there are unsettling like the ability of wiping memories of people who are bad people who judges that all the time they had and yeah, there's a part of the book where animals also have nanitos who can control them. And it was like, yeah, for me it was a bit unsettling. And so the Thunderhead has begun to rule me the wrong way. And I can see it going, breaking havoc, going rampant in the third book. I don't know. Um, yeah, I know that I was very big with the summary of the book. That's because I don't want to reveal some of the plot to it because they are amazing. And the ending is like, ah! And yeah, I mean, I loved everything. I love this book more than the first one because it expands onto the lore and the world building created on the first one. I love the art of the different characters, not only the main characters, but I did love to see a side curry and learn more about her character and, and the way in which she deals with things. I love and learning more about the side of Dom and how it works and the different power bases, if you want. And also Sight Fardai, who sends into a mission to find like the sacred land kind of for Sight Dome. And because he's, one, he's looking to find a solution to the problems that are arising inside the Sight Dome, where there's people who want to respect the old ways. And there's new sites who want to be like go there and things like that. And he wants to, you know, to, to, to put people back into the good way. And yeah, I love uh, that this book, it's... Uh, it's a very strong book for me. It departs from the first one and takes things like a step or two further on. And I love how, yeah, the character grows and the goal building and how it makes you reflect about the dark part of humanity, about what happens when humanity have, uh, sites have like this kind of power of ending lives and, and you know, and carrying themselves without consequences because the thunder hit, it's like a different entity and he doesn't interfere with them. And they're like these separate entities. And it makes you think about how humanity uh, goes forward and how people in power sometimes always finds, uh, sometimes always finds, huh? Sometimes, sadly, maybe always find ways of abusing that power. And you have people who want to keep the status quo and there's people who want to abuse this power. And sometimes it's very unsettling to see, you know, how they deal with things and sometimes how they use that and, or the menace of that to, you know, to eradicate people who think differently or are different or look different or think differently. And yeah, and also the Tonys, those uh, religious cult, so to speak, uh, are going to be more present in this book and I love what we learn about them. And also uh, in the first book, I think we got a glimpse about the Ansaboris, who are the people who have fallen off the grid of society. And we're going to learn more about them in this book. And maybe, maybe, maybe they are not entirely wrong, you know, because they are rebelling about uh, against the thunder heat and all it represents this order that they feel like it's, uh, you know, a play that's not real that's something created and that people should be be free to take their own decisions and their own you know acts even if it's counter in a counter manner or something you know, yeah i mean i love this one sorry if my review wasn't very interesting but yeah i was really trying not to say too much because it's amazing pick this one up if you like the first one you're going to love this one and i cannot wait to read the third one because i uh yeah, I don't know why I didn't read it when it came out, so that's why I did not read the first one and the second one. And now on to the third. Thank you for watching. Bye.